Illuminati is a name that you've probably heard a lot over the past few weeks. And I don't mean in the conspiracy or secret society type of way. Though some of the things we're going to discuss revolving around her are pretty scary. Oh wait, sorry, that's the wrong clip. I'm referring to a YouTuber who does a lot of videos covering corporations and businesses that oftentimes have some shady practices. Ironically, over the past few weeks, however, Illuminati has been exposed for not being the greatest boss to people and being really vindictive towards a lot of people that she deems as her enemies. What started from a post on Twitter directed towards another YouTuber named Legal Eagle has spiraled into tons of people coming out and sharing their experiences working with Illuminati, going from years ago to the current day, showcasing a malicious pattern of behavior of allegedly harassing people that she does not like, as well as spreading lies about them, and trying to silence others by getting their videos taken down under false conditions. Today, we are going to dive deep into the Illuminati situation, starting from 2019, going up to the current day, and going over all of the claims that people have made against her. And we will be comparing these claims against her own response to try and piece some things together in a digestible way. This has been the most requested video I think I've had in a very long time. I know this is a story that's been going on for almost an entire month now, but two things I just want to get out of the way is first, I've been going through a lot in my personal life that has been really taking a lot of time out of my schedule to create content. And two, I've been working on this video for quite a long time. <laughs> this video is going to end up being over an hour and a half long. I made a poll earlier this week on the community tab asking you guys if you would rather me make a video with all of the details, all of the threads, all of the information in it, or trimming the video down and only adding in the most important aspects and giving you a summary of it, which would still be about an hour long. You guys have blown me away because I honestly thought you were going to tell me to just shorten the video, make it as short as possible, but everybody really, really wants all of the details, all of the threads, all of the information. So instead of making two, three, or four videos on this topic, I figured I would just compile it all into one so you get all of the information. There could be more information that comes out eventually, but from this point, it seems like a majority of it's out. Since it is so long, I want to let you know that there's probably going to be some gaming footage throughout a good portion of it. Some of you really like it, some of you don't like it too much, but since it's so, so much longer than my normal content, it's the easiest way for me to get this out in a reasonable amount of time. It's already taken me two weeks to put all of this together so far, so I just wanted to let you know that. And yeah, thank you for watching. After seeing this rabbit hole of repetitive behavior that Blair has allegedly done, I'm saying that word a lot in this video, apologies in advance, over the past three to four years, going back to 2009, she had worked with a creator named Tommy C and somebody that he was friends with made a joke that she didn't like So she decided to delete every single one of his videos that showed her face in them without his permission without asking or without consulting him in any way She tried to silence creators who have criticized her such as Nicholas Diorio But did so indirectly because instead of false flagging the video herself She decided to reach out to the person who made the artwork that was used in his thumbnail to try and get it taken down that way So her hands were clean from the situation or so she thought. She maliciously went after another YouTuber who went by the name of Cruel World Happy Mind, who just confronted her privately about feeling uneasy about how many coincidental similarities there were between Blair's video and her video. It does seem that they were able to get past the situation and move on from it, but in my opinion, it seems like Blair was manipulative in this situation, and I'll get into that more later. She worked on a group YouTube project called Sad Milk with several other creators who have spoken out about the mistreatment that they have received during this time. One claiming that Blair had allegedly made sock accounts to continuously harass him for years after he decided to leave Sad Milk. Another claiming that she would continuously stalk ex Sad Milk members' accounts and laugh at their social blades. And other creators coming out talking about how she was extremely manipulative, how it was like walking around eggshells around her, and how she would constantly make subtweets about them and other people in the Sad Milk situation. Which, if you don't know what a subtweet is, it's basically talking negatively about a person but not naming them or tagging them in the tweet. We are going to dive into all of the threads and details on all of these issues and more in today's video. And get yourself comfy because this is probably the longest video I have ever posted on my channel. 
Before we continue this video, I want to give a very special shout out and thank you to today's sponsors, AdamandEve.com. Adam and Eve is a store for anybody who is 18 or older. They sell a wide variety of adult clothing and items. They have a fantastic 24-7 customer support system and also offer 90-day no-hassle returns if you are unhappy with your purchase. My favorite thing about Adam and Eve is that 20% of their profits go towards fighting the spread of HIV around the world. I think that is a wonderful cause and it's such an amazing thing when companies use part of their profits to help better the world. Go to adamandeve.com today and use code MIMI at checkout for 50% off of one item and free shipping to the United States and Canada. Some exclusions do apply. Thank you so much once again to adamandeve.com for sponsoring today's video. With that being said, let's get back into today's topic. So we're going to go back to about 2019 with the first big issue that I at least know of when it comes to Illuminati. And this instance involves another YouTuber who goes by the name of Tommy C. Years ago, Illuminati Blair would join Tommy C in these news videos. Illuminati had access to Tommy C's channel because he trusted her enough to be what I believe was an admin. I've never given anybody admin abilities on my channel, but from what I understand, it basically makes you able to do anything on the channel except for delete the channel itself. You can delete videos, you could delete comments, you could probably upload videos on your own if you wanted as well. It just basically gives you a limited amount of access to what you can do. At one point, somebody who Tommy C worked with that wasn't even Tommy C himself made a fat joke and this set Blair over the edge and made her extraordinarily angry. Because Illuminati was very, very angry about this fat joke that was made, which wasn't even by Tommy C himself and wasn't even directed at her, she went in and deleted any video of his that she was in i guess what bothers me the most is is the get to the point stuff while it was not a successful project i loved it and it really bothers me that i'm never going to get to see those videos again in order because not only are they drama news videos we did skits and stuff in between them and we worked real hard and you know i i bought all the graphics and 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 did all that stuff and i'm they're they're gone they're they're never coming back um i it and it sucks and um l let me tell you something right now and i prove it later when it comes up this is uh yeah rip rip wilson uh they're not all gone but anything related to blair is gone and some of those videos had like rip wilson and sarah j warren or blair and, or crimson studios and they're they're all gone and i made that playlist for me and i know there's some confusion about whether they're privated or not um yeah some of them were privated uh, as per Blair's request a couple months ago when she was going to sue Keemstar for saying she had an STD. So I cooperated <laughs> and I privated the videos, but before she left, she deleted the private videos too. So that to clear up some of the confusion on, on Augie's stream, um, to clear up some of the confusion, Augie's where some of them said private and some of them deleted. I don't know if it just updated or didn't private. Some of them were pro pro uh, privated. Uh, um, because Blair was going to sue Keemstar and I was like, she didn't want them out there for, I don't know, somebody using it against her. I just, I didn't argue with her. I did it. And I probably would have private the other ones or just downloaded them all. Had she told me if she asked. No, she fucking did it. She could have had a conversation and said, hey, listen, you know, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. I'd really appreciate it if you took the parts with me and your videos out or if you could unlist them. She just up and deleted them without permission. She really crossed a line here. What's even more ironic about this, though, is that there is a lot of hypocrisy when it comes to this because there was another situation she partook in that involved another creator named Tipster where they were making fun of him for his mental health. Again, this is a group of people who make wisecracks about people and each other all the time. And it's never been an issue until this particular instance, right? Keep in mind, I think I say this in the clip that I'm going to play for you guys. Well, I wasn't offended by this. In fact, when I saw it, I actually thought it was kind of funny. Just like with the hamburger meme, I, didn't, I wasn't offended by it. I thought it was funny. But uh, still, it seems kind of weird, doesn't it? Seems a little bit hypocritical to be perfectly fine with making fun of somebody's mental health. But the moment you make a fat joke about someone on the team, suddenly it's a problem. As many of you know, I am a longtime sufferer of anxiety and depression. It's an ongoing struggle that I often deal with. I do. I don't. 
I don't. And one of my main outlets for dealing with it is YouTube. Yeah. I love making videos and hosting live streams for my audience. It's become my primary escape when overcoming the struggles of life. It seemed like she was picking and choosing and flipped like a switch on when it was okay and when it wasn't. Triangle man, triangle man. Sometime after this, a YouTuber named Nicholas Diorio had made a video about Illuminati and, well, that video was mysteriously taken down. Bo Blacks wrote, who false copyright striked Nicholas Diorio's video? It was a meme on Illuminati. This is what I really believe is extremely manipulative on Blair's end. This video was taken down due to the thumbnail that was used in Nick's video. And, well, it just so happened that the thumbnail was drawn by somebody who was contacted by Illuminati. So Nick ended up DMing her and wrote, out of curiosity, did Illuminati have anything to do with you filing a strike? The response was, she only informed me that my art was used and where, just letting me know to be aware. But other than that, no. My fellow art group's advice and my own looking online for advice led me to take that action. She never asked me to. After this began to circulate, Tipster made a video and pointed out that he had received a screenshot from a DM that Illuminati had with this artist, and this is what it actually said. Hey, I just wanted to reach out to you and let you know that there's a hate channel that just used your fan art you made for me as their thumbnail. I don't know if you gave them permission to use that, but if not, I just wanted to let you know so you could protect your work. They respond, Hey, thank you so much for letting me know about this. No, I did not grant them permission to use my artwork, especially not as a thumbnail to lure people in with. Send me a link to them or to tell me their name so I can take care of it. Again, thank you so much for bringing this to my attention. I apologize for it causing an issue for you as well. I'm sure that the person that made the artwork probably felt guilty about the situation when they didn't have to, and it also just is really snaky, in my opinion, to just kind of go through that loophole. She didn't want to get her hands dirty and copyright strike the video herself because she knew that she would get a lot of backlash for it. So she tried to go behind the scenes and get somebody else to take the video down on her behalf, but not really on her behalf because she didn't directly ask that person to. She was just letting them know that there was a hate video made about her and it had their artwork in it. She attempted to do this again. I fail to see how somebody else's behavior is my fault. Illuminati wrote, your vlog is used a lot in here. Enjoy. A message that did not end up going through stated, I don't care. In my opinion, these messages that she'd send other people with hopes of having them take down videos for her, spinning the words to make it seem like it's in their best interest when she probably doesn't care, that is really manipulative. Her method of dealing with situations is just trying to silence anybody who criticizes her. Even if the criticism that is given to you is something you disagree with or something that you don't find to be valid, you are on the internet. There are going to be times when people criticize you. Now, if somebody's re-uploading an entire video without giving any of their own material towards it, then that is fair to copy strike. That is fair to use. If they use any of your personal information, they try to dox you, anything like that, that is fair as well. Even, I could say, if they attempt to slander you in a very obvious way, I'm sure there could be things done with that in that regard. But when it is somebody just giving criticism about a situation, handling it like this has always been frowned upon. We have seen this with recent popular YouTubers such as Aiden Ross, who I haven't made a video on yet. I Show Speed, I think, was another person, and uh, Brent Rivera. There would also come a point when Illuminati would outright ban anybody from her community for simply interacting in any way with anybody who she disliked and would go as far as to block every account who followed people she didn't like. Well, I wouldn't say every account because I don't think I've ever been blocked, but she could have also just not known of my existence, so. Or it could have also been that I was blocked before I removed my Twitter for a year and then when I re-signed up for Twitter, she forgot to block me again. I don't know, I never really noticed, but she has blocked a creator named Repzilla. Repzilla also pointed out uh, about a year ago that Oh wait, 2021's two years ago now, oh my god. In 2021, Ripzilla also pointed out, whoa, I don't think I've ever spoken to this person. With Tipster responding, they block anyone affiliated with Tommy C, Nicholas Diorio, or myself. And she also blocked somebody from her community for interacting with Nicholas Diorio and Tommy C. On one hand, you can block anybody you want. You don't owe anybody an explanation for not wanting to speak with them. But when your only reasoning is because they've interacted 
rapid with somebody that you don't like, it just reminds me of an immature high schooler who wants to play a pick me game. Hey Cosmo. So, a couple of things have come to my mod's attention. I love my server and care deeply for the people within it. And those who threaten the safety of my server and my fans are not people I want in my server. With that being said, you are aware of previous situations caused by those people, and we have seen you openly associating with them. And because of that, we are going to have to let you go. We wish you the best of luck, and we will miss you. Goodbye, Cosmo. This is a sad farewell. I never endorsed anything Nick said about you, as you've proven your side to me previously, and I purposely went past the bogus allegations she was making. I respect your decision. Choosing your circle of friends is an endorsement. This is me saying I don't have that kind of behavior in my circles. He is not my friend. I'll miss you. Then let me explain myself. Sure. So I assume you want to know why I followed and pinged him on Twitter. I was following him way before the whole BS of him trying to bash you on Twitter for BS reasons since you've only shown kindness to me and I'm forever thankful for it. I'm not his friend at all. The only reason I followed him was to see developments in drama on YouTube. The reason I pinged him is that he and a few others I pinged gave me an idea on the type of commentary I think I could do. So no, he and I are not friends. The only people I know in that tweet are Pegasus. Hell, I even went to your ex's channel and called him petty due to the unfounded allegations he had against you. So besides me following Nick for recent drama, I have nothing to do with him. If it helps in any way, I'll block him on Twitter and delete the tweet I made yesterday. Cosmo, we have seen you commenting on videos, replying tweets, etc, etc. So I'm sorry, but it stands. I wish you the best of luck. And in a tweet later on, Cosmo wrote, Still blocked after one year, she threw me under the bus for merely adding Nicholas DiOrio and Tommy C on a meme post. They have a fight, triangle win. Now let's move on to another incident that had occurred with Cruel World Happy Mind. This is a creator whose videos I have seen before, and I think they're very well done. Based off of this situation specifically, my impression of this creator is that they seem like a pretty nice person. There's a lot of irony when it comes to this situation, because when we move forward to the Legal Eagle issue, Illuminati brings up how her editing style was stolen by Legal Eagle's editors, when we of course find out that's actually not the case, and it actually a very, very common editing style that she uses as examples of plagiarism. But years ago, there was an incident that occurred between Illuminati and another creator named Cruel World Happy Mind. From what I understand, it essentially boiled down to Illuminati doing a similar video that Cruel World Happy Mind had done, but the information in Illuminati's video was strikingly similar to Cruel World Happy Mind's, and people brought it to Cruel World Happy Mind's attention. Cruel World Happy Mind, I'm sorry, I know it's Cruel World Happy Mind, but when I say it fast, I just can't say it right. Cruel World Happy Mind. I pronounce things weird and I do my best to pronounce them. It's not intentional. I don't know. There's certain things like a cruel world happy. Cruel. Anyway, she sent Illuminati a DM. I don't know if you know of my channel. I'm a really small YouTuber who has been really inspired by the content you make. I got a few messages about the video you posted about Tyra's MLM because I've done a video on that topic. I'm really happy that you're spreading more awareness on this topic, but it did low key feel like a lot of what was said in the beginning of the video was really similar to the things I discussed regarding Tyra's MLM and her controversies. Coincidences happen, and I'm sure as a larger YouTuber, you are accused of stealing content from people you've never even heard of or seen before. So I get if this message comes across that way. With the intention of just being open and honest, I was really hurt by the video though, because you're someone who has really inspired me and the content I make. So I wanted to reach out and hopefully have an honest but positive discussion on it all. Either way, I still appreciate the work you do. Instead of responding to the DM, Blair talks about this on a podcast without naming Cruel World Happy Mind. Something I recently learned apparently is there is this whole uh, anti-MLM community, mm. right? I kind of thought I was on my own little island doing my own thing. Maybe that's my own ego. I don't watch <laughs> other anti-MLM videos because yeah. I don't want to know what other people are saying or I don't want it influencing what I do. Yeah. So I purposely um, like have terms like that blocked from my YouTube mm. search and that kind of stuff can't influence me. Yeah. Um, what I did have happen though recently, which this is, I don't, I'm going to try to keep it vague because I don't mention this person's channel, but uh, it's, a, it's a very small YouTuber claiming that I copied her 
And okay, <laughs> she, claimed, she claimed that I copied her video that she had done maybe a couple weeks ago, right? And the video that I had done the topic on was suggested to me multiple times from my comment section. So I just listened right. to my comments and I made a yeah. video because that's what people were interested in my opinion on. So she messages me and she goes, I'm just really disappointed because you're someone I look up to and you copied my video and I want credit, right? So I didn't know who this person was. So I went to my moderators and my Discord server and I was like, hey, um, I screenshot the message, I sent it to them and I said, do you know, is this a YouTuber? Can you guys like tell me who this is or what they're even yeah. talking about? Because I had no idea. For World Heavy Mind made a video responding to this. There's two sources that I've seen this video from one is tipster and the other one is from tommy c so i'll leave both of those linked below i'm only going to play a few clips a larger creator posted a video and i out of the blue started getting a ton of messages from people saying that this creator copied my video saying they made a ton of similar points so what ended up happening is i just remember one day seeing this comment i'll put it up on the screen here where someone was telling me they thought another creator like copied my video that i did and i was like freaked out they got a few other comments like that so i was like oh this person thinks this creator copied my video that's really weird. And me at the time, I don't even think I had 20,000 subscribers. So getting messages like that freaked me out because this creator had 600,000 subscribers and I had less than 20. And to hear so many people say the same thing about a situation and message me the same thing scared me. I never accused, straight up accused this creator, this larger creator of copying me. On top of that, something I didn't mention in that video and that this creator seems to conveniently also leave out of this whole story. At the time that people were messaging me this, there were no sources on this person's video. But the day after I sent this message, I was like, whatever, this is stupid. As I said in the anti-MLM video I did four months ago, as I've always felt very soon after this incident, people have a right to do a video on a topic you've done. And I watched the video and while a lot of similar things were said, coincidences do happen when you're researching for something, you can stumble across similar sources. I've made similar points that other YouTubers have made on a topic unknowingly because sometimes that's just how people's minds work. And there were aspects of this larger creator's video that weren't in my video and vice versa. This larger creator never responded. So I was just like, okay, they didn't see, but that's fine, whatever. And for some reason, this message made this larger creator think it's okay to go on a podcast and spread completely false information as well as try and spread a lie about me on her Instagram story. I get messages that this creator went on their Instagram stories to basically talk crap about me. Hey, I think I need to clear some things up with you. Obviously, you see my above message from the time everything took place and you've seen my recent video. I explained that situation because I found the DMs with the other creator to be bizarre, but if you watch the video, I never accuse you of stealing. A few people sent me messages about it and I got scared but realized that I literally don't have ownership over a topic and that's a stupid way to think. Not sure if you've watched that part or misinterpreted it, but I'd love to chat it out because though you may believe differently, I really wanted the drama to stop and wanted the wrong people to no longer be blamed for all of it when they don't deserve the hate. So let's talk. She also at one point implied that Cruel World Happy Mind was subbotting when that wasn't the case and it was just really weird. It almost seems like that while well, Blair now feels like she's threatened by this person because they messaged her in DMs, so now she has to smear this person. And that allegedly shows the levels of Illuminati's character and how far she's willing to go to try and paint people that she deems as competition, a threat, an enemy in the worst light possible and will harp on it unless they are on her good side. Also, not sure if you're referring to me when talking about hitting views. I think she might have meant botting views, but um, I really have no idea what you're talking about. Just lately started googling myself and finding my name in weird places, but please, enlighten me on that one. Last time reaching out to you, sorry if my DMs have been annoying, I just feel like there's a misunderstanding and I didn't realize how offended you were by my message until someone sent me the podcast where you mentioned me. I understand how you'd be frustrated by my DM, but I didn't intend for it to come across in a harsh way. I think the way I acted was ridiculous and was listening to too much to commenters when they tell me someone copied me, etc. I genuinely don't think you copied me. I now know how things work and I'm sure you get a lot of requests to cover this same topic. There's never been any beef on my end. I remember hearing somewhere from someone that you live in blank and I just moved to blank because my husband is stationed there and if you ever want to chat in person, I'm willing to drive where you are and talk it out. I don't want beef or anyone thinking I hate them. Now I can't tell you whether or not Cruel World Happy Mind actually thinks that what she did was ridiculous in response to this situation, but I personally don't think her reaction was ridiculous. At worst, I think it could have been a misunderstanding, but I think that the response that Illuminati gave to her on her podcast was much worse than any way Cruel World Happy Mind had addressed the situation. At a certain point, she made a Twitter thread, just got off of the phone after a three-hour long conversation with Cruel World Happy Mind YouTube, and I am very 
very happy that we were able to finally talk and resolve our issues privately. Ultimately, there was a series of misunderstandings from both sides. We have worked those out to stop the escalation of any drama. She will be removing her part about me in a video she recently did. In return, I will not do the planned live stream on her. We were able to not only work out our problems, but come to a common understanding and even have a great conversation at the end about our research. Philosophies and interpretations on many parts of MLMs, our personal lives, etc. We both want the drama between it to end. There is no ill will here, and we are moving on. I appreciate that we are both able to move on. And maybe once the restrictions in Colorado lighten up, we can hang out one day too. Madison, I appreciated the chat. We needed to have it. And I'm happy that we are on the same page on a vast majority of things. Thank you for coming into the conversation level-headed with me so we could knock this out and move on. I also don't like the wording she used in parts of these tweets. It almost seems like she was creating some kind of pressure to get the criticism of her removed. Obviously, I can't speak on behalf of Cruel World Happy Mind on this. She had replied to this tweet, by the way, which states, I really appreciate you having a respectful conversation with me and hearing me out. I'm really glad we were able to do that and move forward understanding one another better. So maybe they were able to clear the air in a healthy way and maybe things were handled without any pressure or manipulation. But as an outsider to this situation with hindsight, it makes me question Illuminati's true intentions, especially since we now see a pattern of her trying to handle situations privately, as well as indirectly attempting to take down other people's videos criticizing her when she doesn't get her way. I'm so glad you were open to having a genuine conversation with her because I watch both of you and that part of the video I didn't even feel was that negative. Like she explained, she had gotten over it after her initial hurt and understood it was possibly a mere coincidence. Illuminati responds, it really was. And hey, we both got a little angry on Twitter earlier, but we realized that and worked it out privately. And to be honest, I think that's really important. A lot of miscommunication and we cleared it all up and then some. It was really productive and I enjoyed the call. And I really am not a fan of the wording of this when you look at the previous message that Cruel World Happy Mind had written, whether or not you think that Cruel World Happy Mind should or shouldn't have apologized for the way that she acted in the situation, she took ownership of the way she handled it without bringing anybody else into the situation the cast blame. What I mean by this is the fact that when you read this tweet that Illuminati made, instead of saying, you know what, yeah, I got a little angry on Twitter, I said some things in a podcast because I misunderstood the situation and I'm sorry about that. She uses the word we. We both got angry on Twitter. What makes the situation deeper than what it appears to be on the surface back in 2021 is what we get into later. The way she handles the legal eagle situation, the response she made addressing all of the YouTube drama with other people in her sad milk group, casting blame on other people instead of owning up to things herself. I'm going to sound like a broken record by the end of this video, but it's not one instance we're looking at here. It's a repetitive pattern of behavior, which now that I think of it, most of the topics we cover are covered due to repetitive patterns. It's usually not just one situation or one instance. It's usually a pattern of behavior or multiple situations that are very similar to each other that is displayed over a long period of time with no signs of growth, no signs of improvement. There was another situation. It was resurfaced. Somebody brought this to attention on Twitter. Somebody made an artwork piece of her wearing a one-piece bathing suit, and the swimsuit wasn't really revealing. I mean, it was very shapely, but it wasn't EORN a graphic, if you know what I mean. Blair had gotten so irate over this piece of artwork that she basically, allegedly, ran this person off the internet and the person that pointed this out on Twitter recently after this all resurfaced pointed out that not only did this happen, but 
she had used a much more revealing photo in a video of hers that she had on her channel. You guys are talking about how awful Illuminati is, but let me remind y'all that she sent her fans to harass and get an artist off the internet because they drew her in a swimsuit. Yet one video had fan art of her in a swimsuit. This is the picture of Illuminati in the swimsuit that somebody had drawn and she had allegedly sent a lot of hate to that person. So here's proof that Illuminati got her fans to harass an artist because they drew her OC in a swimsuit. The fact that she did this sh was evil. By the way, this is a triangle. This is a character with a triangle as a head. Under the tweet are screenshots from Illuminati's Twitter that states, ew, so there's another ghost artist named Ludenwa drawing my pyramid character in a way I've explicitly mentioned many times that I do not like my character being drawn. Gross mother I'm going to be just blocking off people that were commenting in support of that post. Y'all ain't fans of mine if you support this BS. It would be one thing if Illuminati said, you know what, I've mentioned this before, I would really respect if you didn't draw me in that way that makes me feel uncomfortable. I'm sure the creator of the artwork would have taken it down. Instead, she had her fans attack this person and even wrote this tweet which was really, really just downright nasty. This just sounds extremely hostile to me and also extremely hypocritical. I do have to agree with the person who pointed this out because underneath this tweet, they also posted, this is the other artwork in question. And as you can see in this picture, it is much more revealing than the other picture in the swimsuit. Blair gets a lewd and waff banned for making art of her OC in a one-piece swimsuit, yet this pic of her OC in a two-piece swimsuit becomes the featured pick of her beach body video. So now let's get to the legal eagle situation because this is where things really hit a peak and then immediately swan dived into everything that we've been seeing over the past few weeks. Not legal eagle editors broaching my editors to take my video style and when they didn't give up the info they literally copied it. And by the way I have the messages from my editors and found an email from them too. Just change the color from purple to blue huh? Interesting. So I went through my emails and found this just outright saying saying, yeah, I'm gonna do this, but if you could make it easier for me, I'd appreciate it. Hey Blair, I work as an editor for Legal Eagle, and I was wondering if there was some After Effects plugin you guys used for things like the intro to the first NFL video, where the lighter colors appear to stick out in 3D. We could recreate it, but we figured there was probably a faster method that you guys were using. Here's the video I'm talking about, just so you know what I mean. As somebody who is not only a YouTuber, but is also an editor of my own content, I can tell you that there probably are faster methods to half of the video effects that you see a lot of people using than to just start it from scratch. At least from my experience, there are tons of websites like Motion Array, Storyblocks, etc. that use templates. You pay a subscription service and you can buy those templates to put in your videos, making it a lot faster to edit. An example of this is her page rip. Somebody even pointed out that on Motion Array, they have that very same effect. That is how popular a page rip design is. Oh, and the highlighting effect? If you go on YouTube, you can find a plethora of tutorials on how to use that effect and how to make that effect. In other words, it's not an original idea that somebody's copying from Blair. This is something that is very, very common, not just in YouTube videos, but also in documentaries, as many other YouTubers have pointed out. Speaking of documentaries, there were people who have called Blair out for were plagiarizing a documentary quote in one of her videos. Now, from what I understand about people pointing out the fact that she allegedly plagiarized a documentary for one of her videos is that she claims it wasn't plagiarism because she had listed this documentary in a source in one of her one million links that she sources. But the thing is, she repeated everything word for word and didn't even paraphrase it. It was just taken right out of that script and put into hers. Professor Hugh Fudenberg. Professor Fudenberg has long been controversial. A man named Hugh Fudenberg, a former immunologist who has been long controversial. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit involving the Food and Drug Administration, which told him 
he had to stop injecting his autistic child patients with blood products. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit with the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic patients with blood products. Also went to my Discord server to try and get more to cop the style. And to be honest, I wouldn't have believed any of this was trying to replicate my videos if not for the email and Discord stuff that was done preemptive to their video coming out. Like, talk about, can I copy your homework? Yeah, but just make it a little different, shaking my head. Legal Legal responds and says, Hey Illuminati, I think this is a big misunderstanding. Perhaps great minds think alike. No one on my team is trying to copy you. Without an exhaustive review of your channel, I believe we used those two styles before your channel did. We used them for three to four years. Plus the two styles, a pseudo paper rip and a highlight, are extremely common on YouTube. Like I said a few moments ago, it is a very common thing. The editor you're talking about didn't even design either of those two elements. Again, we've used them for three to four years at this point. Danny is a great and thorough editor. When he reached out via email, he was just hoping to find out what plugin your team used on a particular video. A very common practice among editors. See, I told you, probably looking for a template or a plugin. He was not looking to copy anyone's style. Danny is also a freelancer who makes his own videos. In the Discord, the video he referenced was about being inspired by your subject matter, not your style. He's a fan of yours. The video he was referencing was a video of his own, not a Legal Eagle video. Here's the end of the Discord chat that Danny provided to me. He was trying to edit a video, of his own, using only DaVinci Resolve. He was just looking for some technical help, and then thanked everyone anyway. In the message you see Danny saying, and about talking to the editing team, I've emailed in the past but got no response, so I figured I'd try here. Flo responds, this isn't really the place for that. This is just to ask questions about the server. As the mod team isn't really involved in editing, the editing team are busy people. A supposed editor responds, it's true, I'm very busy, but you're not busy enough to put down Discord. Ho <laughs> ho! Anyway, Danny responds, ah, well, thanks for the help. YouTube is great because it's collaborative, and the rising tide rises all ships. My team and I always try to provide original, high-quality, informative content. We try to help others when they ask for it. There aren't really any trade secrets around here. I didn't know that Danny reached out to you, but I don't fault him for doing so. If anything, I think everyone on the platform should be more open and sharing. Anyway, if you feel differently or want to hash it out, my DMs are open. Shortly after this, Illuminati deleted her Twitter thread. There is one more thread made by somebody who was part of an anti-MLM community. I don't know how I feel about the entire thread as a lot of details were added that I think might have been unnecessary. However, the main point of this is a writer of Illuminati tried to get into this Facebook group of anti-MLM stuff to work on a particular project about a company which I read as BOO. And one of the admins felt really uncomfortable about this writer being part of the group because they did not want their work in the work of many others to be shared, especially since some of the posts written by others involved some issues with legalities, according to the person who wrote this thread. And the worst part was the fact that Illuminati had allegedly taken the work from many people who were in this group when it was specifically requested that her writers do not do that, thus creating another pillar of hypocrisy regarding the fact that Illuminati wants to come after people for allegedly stealing her ideas, her aesthetics, her work, but it's fine when her writers writers allegedly do the same thing, but in a possibly worse way. I want to start this story off by saying I wasn't planning to talk about this post at all, but since it's come to my attention that someone is trying to, yet again, use my experience for a video, I feel I have to tell my story. Enough bad stuff has come out about the subject of this story that I didn't feel the need to make a public post about my experience, but alas, I now feel I must prevent it from being distorted. So here it goes. Recently, there's been a lot of drama going on with a YouTuber named Who Goes By a Illuminati on YouTube. Blair became popular reading Reddit posts on the subreddit r anti MLM. This also made her following largely compromised of members of the anti MLM movement. I've never hidden this story. I've discussed it over the years in responses to people on my page and in Facebook's anti MLM groups. I just don't see the need to add to everything else with a public post like this as it doesn't change the current events, nor is it as bad as what she's done to those speaking out now. I'm only doing so because I feel it's my story to tell and I want it to be told accurately. In August of 2021, it was 
the height of the fight against the MLM company Black Oxygen Organic, BOO. I started and led an anti-MLM activism group named Boo is Woo. Through the collaborative efforts with other activists, ex-Boo reps, and the very dedicated Boo is Woo group members, we helped to take Boo down. At the time, the Boo is Woo admin team consisted of my friends and fellow activists. Some admins were active and some were not. I'm mentioning it because it was just some of the admins, Stacy, Kat, Jess, and Ashley, who were involved in this Blair situation and the decision-making process. Ashley alerted me that one of Blair's writers had requested to join Boo is Woo. As you'll see in the screenshots below, this made me uncomfortable and I needed to think it over. On one hand, Blair has a large channel that could help get the word out. On the other hand, she has self-isolated herself from the anti-MLM movement, was not involved in any activism, denounced the movement, and claimed we all just shame rep. She has lied about and slandered a fellow creator, Madison, Cruel World Happy Mind on YouTube, and lied about not knowing the movement even existed. It didn't sit right with me or my admin team that she wanted to make a monetized video off of our hard work, the work of informants, the work of those who actually involved in activism, and the work of anti-MLM movement group members who worked tirelessly collecting and reporting information on Boo. Ultimately, I decided not to add the writer to the group. They were declined and then requested to join again. One of the less active admins, who hadn't seen the discussion on why we didn't want them in the group, let them in. The writer was in for about two hours when I realized and kicked them out of the group. The writer then emailed me where I explicitly state that I do not consent to the group being used for Blair's video. Blair still made the video and to this day, my group is listed as the second source, directly after Boo's own website. It's very clear from the video content that much of it was information taken directly from Boo as Woo. Information in the group included personal stories, legal information, and insider information that could put people at legal risk. Privacy and permission were very important. When her video came out, multiple admins and friends aware of the situation were upset and decided to call Blair out on her video comments. All of the comments were deleted. No action or rectification was taken. No discussion was had. Everyone was just silent. Later in the Boo is Woo saga, after Boo was successfully taken down, I was featured in an NBC article and a Vice News article about Boo for my activism work bringing public attention to Boo and leading the activism group. I also made a writer with the consumer advocacy nonprofit TINA Aware and provided the majority of the evidence for her, the fact that Youngevity was still selling Boo. That resulted in a TINA article exposing Youngevity. Blair made a second video on Boo based on these articles. She uses my image, my words, and my name, which she pronounces wrong, in the video and never spoke to me about it. They are public articles and I understand anyone can make a video on it, but after her using my private group as a main source for her first video despite my non-consent and despite her being called out for using information she didn't have permission to use, it just felt like another punch to the gut of somebody using me and my activism work and the activism work of my friends for monetized content without our consent and under the guise of feigned appreciation. To me and the admins involved in the situation and considering what she had done even prior to this, that made it clear to us the type of person Blair was. She was willing to use other people's work without permission for her own gain. She was willing to lie and distort the truth. She lists the group but does not credit the individual sources. One could argue that she was even a plagiarizer. She didn't care about other people's feelings, their work, their time, their energy, or their consent. This is now clearly a pattern of behavior. I agree, as I've been saying this whole time, there are several patterns here that Blair displays. Many of those same issues are being brought up again in this current drama. And I sincerely empathize with those involved who also experienced this type and far, far worse disrespect from Blair. I can't say that I am surprised though. I am glad that the public is getting to see how Blair treats people. Hopefully all of this prevents her from doing the same to others. And that is my story. So now we are getting into the sad milk situation. This part of the video is going to be extremely long because we are going to read several threads from several people and cross-reference points in Blair's video to several different threads and videos made by some of the members of Sad Milk. The main people that I am aware are involved in Sad Milk, aside from Illuminati, were Oz, Wonderstruck, The Click, and One Topic. As of right now, these are the four people I have seen threads from and have seen videos from, and this is where things take a really severe turn. 
The first person I want to go over is The Click. His was the most informative, in my opinion, due to everything that has been going on for the past few years. And what he mentions in this is really, really telling of Blair's character, allegedly. On April 23rd, The Click made a Twitter thread regarding Illuminati after the entire Legal Eagle situation. Hey ya peeps, I've seen the recent drama regarding Illuminati, and I would like to clarify I am not affiliated with her and haven't been for over two years. I left her and her collaboration group Sad Milk due to similar behavior as seen in recent events, lashing out at friends and fans, paranoia, and generally poor anger management, to name a few. Eventually, I believe pretty much the whole group left her. The last meeting I ever had with her, she spent half an hour, I think, uh, hard to know, screaming at me for an array of random things, calling me a bad friend, lazy, and a bunch of random accusations that didn't really have anything to do with me. There is no way you can have the resume you claim and be this fucking stupid, and so on. No one even raised their voice back at her. I left along with several other members, half the group at the time. So although we're not exactly there yet, Illuminati made a video response to a lot of these Twitter threads made about her and the Legal Eagle situation, and in that video she talks about how she felt really uncomfortable and didn't want to be part of this call, and that she was frustrated because she was being talked over. Reluctantly, I joined the conversation and as I was speaking, one topic talked over me and out of frustration of this happening yet again, I raised my voice and said, can you shut up and let me talk for once? And he left the call and that's the last time I ever spoke with him. Looking back at it now, I should not have spoken to my friend like that. But in several different threads, it kind of contradicts that. I don't want it to seem like I'm going to be disregarding Illuminati's response to a lot of this. I will be paraphrasing and adding in as much as I can when it's relevant. I just don't trust that a month from now or at some point in the near future, Future, she's not going to go on some sort of copy striking frenzy for anybody who puts too many clips of her video into theirs. And since her video response is the only response she has made so far at the time of recording this video, she hasn't made any text posts or anything like that, adding very small clips and paraphrasing what she says in other clips is probably my best option to get her point across. But I will be leaving her video along with many others linked in the description below so you can watch that in full if you haven't already and form your own opinion on the situation. She spent the next few months spreading lies and half-truths about us on the Sad Milk Reddit page and vague posts on Twitter. I still have all the screenshots. She would turn her friends against you or specifically team up with people she knew didn't like you so she had allies against you. This sounds absolutely insane. Rallying mainly banned problematic community members known to be liars and conflict seekers. When people started questioning that maybe she was the reason everyone left, there was a very convenient updigging of 11 to 14 year old videos of me. Stuff I made back when I started my channel in 2009 when I was a teenager. And as you can probably guess, some of the jokes from that time age like milk. I publicly owned up to my past mistakes and apologized, doing my best to be transparent and honest about my past. She would still harp on it, ignoring the fact it had already been addressed, trying to direct as much attention to it as possible, publicly saying it was a bad apology, along with vague posting about it in comments on the collaboration channel. Maybe an attempt to get people to assume I had been kicked out for poor behavior rather than leave because of her own behavior. She, assuming it was her as she had channel access, also liked to pull what I can only describe as very petty acts of revenge. For example, some people left comments on the collaboration channel saying good that click left. They obviously got ratioed hard as people were there for the creators. She would manually go in and delete the ratioing comments but leave the original hate comment. She tried to gain control of my discord when it surpassed hers in size by tossing around accusations at staff and trying to get rid of my team and replacing it with hers. That is unhinged. Giving me the ultimatum to fire my entire senior team or be publicly fired from sad milk myself. I was still a YouTube fresh at the time and she was quite intimidating, claiming connections and cloud reputation and powerful friends. So everyone stayed mostly silent and had to constantly look over our shoulders for the next year. None of us even mentioning the whole thing. We were even worried talking in our own discords as it became apparent she had spies within our moderation ranks. We were just hoping we wouldn't have any reputation completely destroyed for simply walking away. This is just a brief summary of events. It's sad to see that she hasn't changed.
Illuminati's response to Click was really interesting because she painted him in a really terrible light. She contradicts a lot of what she had said in her Discord messages. This is just one example off of the top of my head. I was actually unaware of those videos at the time of our friendship, but had I been aware of them, that friendship would have likely ended sooner. Unfortunately, when those videos surfaced, it wasn't really all that shocking to me as Oz Media and I had actually talked about how Click had been using the Arsler while we played games together. These two sentences that she says back back to back literally contradict themselves because on one hand she says if she knew he used this language her friendship would have ended with him sooner but then she follows it up with but we knew he used this language. We're going to come back to this in a little bit and I'll share my thoughts on this part of the issue but this was just the first thing I thought of when it comes to a video full of contradicting statements that Blair has made. She goes as far as to accuse the click of ignoring predatory people in his discord server claiming that he was blowing off people who were trying to report inappropriate behavior taking place in his server, but as we see in the Click's video response, he actually talks about how he was asleep at the time all of this had happened, and that it was resolved rather quickly, which does not line up with what Blair was saying. The situation brought up mentions a pedo joining my Discord. It is said that neither I nor my team took action against this predatory person and actively chose to do nothing to resolve the situation, basically just letting them run amok. Click did not address it or wasn't fast enough, etc. Here are the DMs of said creep, full username, etc. that she has already shown in her video. Now the first detail that was conveniently left out of the accusations is that I was asleep. In my time zone this occurred around 2am and within the span of me sleeping this random creep in question had already gotten banned. I took the liberty to dig through the old ban logs on my server and here it is. He was banned at 2.14am my time zone. It's also important to note that this is, sadly, the norm. Our server alone has 44,000 members and almost 3,000 bans. It is a well-known fact that Discord has real problems when it comes to exploitative individuals and communities using their platform. We as creators do our best to clean this up as well as the platform teams. Neither I nor my team condone this sort of exploitative behavior and do our best to address it when it comes to our attention. This isn't a clicks Discord issue, it's a Discord issue. When looking into this even more, I actually found a video scrolling through YouTube and it was a clip of Blair talking about this situation in a different different way months ago. Like, as kind of an offset tangent, I remember there was someone I used to be friends with who ran a Discord server, and uh, my friends and I found out that there was someone in that server who was above the age of 18, like explicitly talking about how they were in love or like in a relationship of some gross variety with a 14 year old. And then I stopped being friends with that person because that person wouldn't do anything about it. And they go, well, that's their personal life. Like they can deal with it. And I was like, what the f Where was the part that the click said that's their personal life so he can deal with it. That just went out the window, huh? I will never be able to fathom the amount of confidence one must have to straight up lie about something like that and just assume there's never going to be any consequence of it or that their audience isn't going to double check it. I mean, I guess for a while it worked, but now with hindsight, also we're not into the wonderstruck part of this video yet, but he also points out something that I find relevant to be in this portion of the video, which is this. If Blair had the information and documented evidence on a Discord server that, as she depicted, cultivated files. And truly believe this, why did she wait three years to come forward? Why did she allow the click on Sadmilk or play games with him in the free time? And he also made a very lengthy Twitter response as well. Watching the Illuminati response video at the moment, only 25 minutes in so far, but that's not a very accurate retelling of events. I will be making a video on my own, but for a quick address for now, I didn't pay editors. For context, I was just a few weeks into YouTube and was drowning in paperwork since I had just just set up my company. My company card got declined for a $400 payment to her for editor costs. When she sent me a reminder, I paid her from my personal account to ensure she didn't get the wrong idea, which is more expensive as you pay with net salary instead of gross revenue. Odd thing to bring up, as it was resolved quite smoothly, she did do a lot of work on the collab channel, but that was also the role she wanted and insisted on having. It was very hard to help out as she would not offer proper access to either the channel, editor communication, drives, you name it. We didn't also tell her to raise her cut of the channel when it became apparent she did more hours. She declined, which was fine by me, but it turned sour when she demanded help, but also would not give access to do so. As for the meeting, she's the one who demanded a meeting. When OT and I didn't let Oz talk over us, he was still acting mediator at the time, she stormed towards the mic from listening in from the background, screaming, 
shut the F up, shut the F up. Now it's me who's talking. It didn't get more pleasant as it went on. I don't know about you guys, but this doesn't sound very professional for somebody who claims to be a professional businesswoman. That's not appropriate behavior to display, especially to people who are working for or with you. Anyway, back to the thread. As for the Discord, yes, we had a random creep in a voice chat. It's a large public Discord. It, it happens, sadly, as most server owners will attest to. A couple of mods failed to act in a timely manner. They are not on the team anymore, obviously. Also, good to keep in mind these mods are community volunteers, not trained law enforcement. But the claim, I didn't respond to it, is technically true because it was 3 a.m. in my time zone. By the time I woke up, the individual was already banned. Blair and her team had already gone full swing to accuse anyone of being a a half-asleep mod not responding to a ban fast enough? P defender. People who tried to de-escalate? P allies. You get the gist. This escalated to her trying to replace my whole team with her own. Also worth mentioning, the admin that was removed for explicit content isn't consistent with the timeline. This person was actually removed by me personally when this was brought to light. It also happened months, I think, before all of the rest. Hey, I don't mean to bother you, but can we talk soon when you're free? I'm in a bit of a conundrum and I don't know what to do. Yeah, what's going down? Can I call? Girlfriend is getting ready for work nearby. How sensitive is the topic? Very. It involves what is going on? In Click server and Click knowing, 19-year-old and a 12-year-old conversation was public in his server. Multiple members went to his staff and did nothing. This is a prime example of what seems to be an over-exaggeration, saying that Click already knew about this when Click says he was asleep when this happened. My staff in there had to ban the person and tag their ID to Discord to report them. And this is on the heels of Click's admin sending BDSM texts to minor-aged mods and preying on sexual interests. Also, click using vile language up until 2020. I do recall saying it once in context to you and your server when we started working. One of your mods actually gave me a warning for it. We laughed about it together, Blair, because I didn't know it was a bad word and the mod kept the warning as a meme badge of honor. So that you would have to cut ties by such gross behavior is actually just a lie. We laughed about it because it obviously wasn't meant in bad faith and was a silly occurrence. Also, bringing up the time my channel was wrongfully terminated? Really? I appreciated my friends at the time who were there, but you weren't the one who saved me, Blair. My MCN did after fighting for three weeks over Christmas, so cut the sh**. Also worth mentioning, you deleted the Sad Mill community tab after I called out your behavior with the comment section. Good thing I have screenshots. I will be making a full response video after I let the adrenaline pass. I'm done taking her slander after two and a half years. So like I mentioned, the click did make a very lengthy response video. We're not going to go over the entire video. I just want to point out a few things. One being something click points out that Illuminati allegedly hides behind sock accounts to harass people she used to affiliate with and holds grudges towards. Here is Illuminati having a conversation with the same admin, sharing the same kind of, you know, dirt digging old videos that we've seen previously in this video. And she says, 16 seconds, the alt account is gonna love this. In the next screenshot, you can see her writing out a draft. I saw on the Sad Milk announcement of all the milkmen, now I'm seeing the comments. We all agree it's obvious they're not on good terms. Blair tweeting about being stabbed in the back, etc, etc. This draft matches with one of the posts made by an alt account called Doobie Schmertz on Reddit. Again, I want to say allegedly for a lot of this because just in case she wants to blame it on her stalker Amy or something. That was a joke. It was a joke. I'm trying to cope with other things. I need you to help me work with blank to help me find click saying the R slur in Sad Milk's raw audio. I can do that. Let me get a shower and I'll be down. She claims he said it in a Sad Milk video, but can't remember which one. And she's over her head with I'll pay you $200 to find it. Is this even legal? I'm genuinely asking because something like this sounds like it shouldn't be. I could understand if this was some kind of investigation for something really serious, like an unsolved case or something, or somebody being a predator. Basically, if it involved some kind of dangerous criminal act of some kind. But paying somebody $200 to find a 10-year-old video of something 
somebody saying the R word? The same word that Illuminati allegedly said kind of recently is completely insane to me. She even states in another Discord message that after finding an old clip of the click saying the N word, that the alt account is going to love this. So it's not even like she's doing this in a way to say, hey, this is wrong, this is harmful. She's being blatantly vindictive and is celebrating this like a victory. Another thing that cracks me up is her saying, I'm a level with y'all here, reading through things and seeing blank excuse clicks saying the R slur because it was 10 years ago and irrelevant is a super yikes to me. Again, I'm the same age as click and that word wasn't ever in my vocabulary, not 10 years ago, not now. That's a blatant lie because it was never appropriate. Same with him saying the N word or F slur. Being edgy is not an excuse and seeing it being dismissed so lightly like that is actually seriously gross. Click, you are right. Those videos in question are old, and at this point, they're kind of irrelevant. People can learn and people can change. Reading through things and seeing blank excuse clicks saying the R slur because it was 10 years ago and irrelevant is a super yikes to me. Those videos in question are old, and at this point, they're kind of irrelevant. I don't believe she actually cares as much she's trying to make it seem. I think she just really, really wants to drag this person down as far as she can. She even has other people saying, I'm sure there's more, which I don't have a problem problem with the word, but she does for some reason, even though she uses it in private. So on top of that screenshot, there are people who claim that she does use the same words in private, allegedly. Now in the clicks video, he talks about growing up not realizing that that word was inappropriate to say, since it was so commonly used. And personally, I've had a similar experience growing up, before and even after I've been diagnosed with different conditions and disorders. I have heard people say this word so many different times and personally never took offense to it, except for one time when somebody was blatantly using that word to insult me. And they did it in a way that combined my name with that word. And I'm not saying that to seek pity or anything like that. This was a really, really long time ago, and I'm sure this person would never do anything like that now. I haven't seen or spoke to them in years. This was something that happened when I was a kid. But my stance on stuff like this is, while I'm not going to post this language in a video because my experience isn't going to be the same as everybody else's, even with diagnosed mental disorders, along with other conditions. I'm not going to flip the hell out on somebody who has said that word 12 years ago in a Minecraft video, and you sure as hell wouldn't catch me dead trying to give somebody $200 to dig up a clip of them saying an offensive word. While I have discussed people in the past who have been very nasty to other people using vulgar language and other means of just being awful to them. When I bring those things up, it's usually due to a continuous pattern of behavior. If a person has said or done something 5, 10, 12, 15 years ago, but they show to be a different type of person now and they show that they have grown and that they are trying to better themselves, as long as whatever they had done isn't some kind of crime or creepy predatory thing, making sock accounts to not only only harass the creator who allegedly said these things, but also harass any single person who interacts with them at any point, is not only extremely unproductive, but also is a step way too far. But if you agree with me in thinking that that is a step too far, brace yourself because it's about to get a lot worse. Let's dive into this post that Illuminati had allegedly made under the name Doobie Schmertz. Again, as of right now, she has not denied that this was her, and this post has been deleted the source that I have gotten this from was directly from the clicks video. This is the truth about sad milk. I saw the sad milk announcement. I follow all the milkmen on their social medias. I am seeing the comments on their new announcement and I think there is a big piece of the puzzle that is missing. We don't know what happened. I made an account on Reddit to see if this subreddit is active and I see you are talking about this too. I think this is a very good place to vent and rant about what I think I have figured out because no one else is talking about it. So I'm like really wondering if I'm just freaking out over nothing. Like, it really looks like creative differences is dumb AF. Blair tweeting about being stabbed in the back, one topic leaving his supporter server and then watching so many of his mods disappear, and Wonderstruck talking about how he hates friends fighting, and even Clicky 
not streaming as much and deleting some of the streams and clips. I think something happened, guys. I think I figured out what really happened. I was a big fan of Click. I thought his streams were a great way to interact with people like me, even if I couldn't donate as much. I think Blair saw some of his streams. He did a stream where he watched some of his old videos, and there's a video he watches where he said the R slur at the beginning. He realized what he said, but did not apologize to us for it. As an autist, I was mad that he would call a Minecraft zombie that word. He did not apologize for it, he just laughed about it. The stream is gone, but I found the video and it's still on his channel. If this is Blair Illuminati, on this sock account, this sentence here would imply that she is role-playing as an autistic person, pretending to be somebody she most likely is not that we know of. I have not seen a single post or video or any public mention of Blair being autistic or even seeking a diagnosis for autism or anything else for that matter. We obviously don't know everything in our personal life, we only know what she chooses to share, but even her friends that were a part of this sad milk group, from what I have seen, none of them have mentioned anything about her being autistic. So if this is Blair hiding behind the Doobie Schmertz account to say these things, and if she is role-playing as somebody who is autistic to add weight to the fake outrage about this video clip from over 10 years ago, that's foul. That is really really, really low. That is a seriously wicked thing to do. Harassing not only the click, but literally anybody who interacts with him, sharing this video clip, weaponizing outrage, which by the way, from everything I have seen, I haven't seen one person respond to any of these comments saying, yeah, I'm also offended. In fact, more people seem to be upset with the fact that this was even brought up because it's clear that more harm was done here than good. Anyway, regardless, Regardless of who this doobie schmertz person is, it seems like that post had been deleted. The tweets, on the other hand, still appear to be up at the time of recording this. If you're going to go out of your way to harass people and their fans over something that you really dislike, whether it be a recent situation or something that happened years ago, do it on your main account. Do it with your full chest. Don't hide behind alternative accounts because what that shows is that you know what you're doing is wrong. Another member of Sad Milk called One Topic had also made a thread about Illuminati and Sad Milk as a whole. My memory is fuzzy because despite how fun things started, it ended up being a source of stress that we've worked hard to move on from. I've honestly tried not to apply any act of thought to it in a long time. While this is the first, I hope it to be my last time addressing this. Before any projects, we were a few people who just started our YouTube journeys and who were lucky enough to meet up with others we looked up to and respected in a Discord call one night and just started riffing, genuinely enjoying one another's company and humor. Conversation amongst us would occasionally turn to future goals and whether we could all make this work, and we were excited that our channels were doing well. Realistically, nowhere near full-time work, but more importantly to us, people were genuinely enjoying the content. When I started thinking about going full-time, my channel was making roughly $20 a day, but I've never been more sure in my life. This was my dream. We were very open with the creators around us about what we hoped was possible, and that spooled up into potential projects. We'd all watch one another's content, genuinely and fans, but no real experience with how things really work. One of us had been around the platform for longer with more experience in how YouTube worked and doing it as a job. Tons of advice we all appreciated and valued. Most of us did one-off collabs when we had time, genuinely silly fun stuff, but not a whole group collab, new territory for us. We didn't know where to get started with sourcing editors and sourcing content, etc. But after some quick conversations, it all just fell into place. One member of the group took the lead. I wonder who that is. And in a night we'd whipped up assets and a name, and an idea. Sad Milk. And it was a blast. A bunch of homies all hanging out in Discord doing nonsense. Some really good memories. What really solidified commitment amongst us was when Click's channel was deleted by YouTube, on Christmas no less. The group was in a call when we saw, and called Click while he was asleep to make sure he could jump on it fast. And we all reached out to YouTube and made tweets. It took weeks for YouTube over the holidays to even give him a real review or response. And this was just when he had gone full-time. It was high stress, but we were all there to support 
support him. I even bugged him into us starting up a podcast to help distract him. Finally, they reviewed the issue, properly responded, and he got his channel back. After going through that together, we all felt like we had each other's best interest at heart. We were friends and trusted one another implicitly. I also decided to go full-time around then, despite not making near the funds I needed to realistically pull it off, and no real savings. I knew this was worth the risk. The group project and the potential success of it also factored into this decision, but also the time needed. Back then, I was stretched so thin between more than full-time hours at the day job, recording personal videos, recording group videos, working on the podcast, Patreon, Discord, and streaming, that I was falling asleep during recordings and sleeping on my keyboard while editing. Quit my job, even went to meet some of the gang, and that was so cool. I have a ridiculous video of a few of us running in the snow and having a snowball fight. I felt really connected to everyone in the group. Went home super charged up and ready to record more silly stuff. Expectations changed, and we started recording more frequently, enjoying some more than others. But it was us as a group that we enjoyed most regardless of what we were doing. So we really pushed to make it work, even with the extra recordings. I'm not sure what the initial tipping point was, but likely a combination of no one having enough time for everything, time zones, and conflicting schedules. But we all started to rub one another the wrong way. I did my best to help mediate conflict, especially because many of us had genuine fears that arguments were being taken too far. I did my best to stay in the middle and be the person to try and help fix things, DMing both parties and sitting in calls. I'm not perfect, but I tried. I felt each person was my friend and thought if we could just get past the petty things, the small things, we could really make this work. But that day never came. I did not know that not everyone was coming to those conversations in good faith, and I'm still surprised. It fractured the group and out of very real fear of retaliation, if anyone stepped out of line, we tried to make the best of it. We kept showing up and recording, tried to help, but conflicts continued to pile up, fears piled up, and communication broke down. Ultimately, the fact is, we didn't have enough time each day to complete our own work and projects and continued the group project, all while trying to hash out disagreement after disagreement. It was becoming unhealthy for us behind the scenes, and you could see how drained we were. To say it was negatively affecting my mental health would be an understatement. Three of us opted to leave once we realized how far gone the project was. We said we'd go our separate ways without causing a public stir or mess, and we hoped those remaining would find success. We didn't learn about the rumors and the stories that were told about us until a short time later. It hurt. Who we thought of as friends were maliciously spreading falsehoods about us to justify a project we walked away from was better without us. We stayed silent, even privately, just tried to do damage control quietly while unnecessary theories spun. Every few months for the next years, we would hear another worse rumor, and we'd work to do damage control all over again. This was mentally and emotionally overwhelming. We all worked hard, but it didn't work out. We walked away from a project years ago and haven't had any interest in participating in drama. Acting maliciously towards us was not appropriate. I just wanted to work on my small corner of the internet doing silly stuff for fun. We then have another creator that goes by the name of Oz Media. This person spoke out against Illuminati through Twitter. I think it's time that I actually speak out on the current Twitter threads regarding Sad Milk in 2020 to 2021. I cannot express how scared I am to do this. The fear I have in my gut to even speak out. However, I do feel it's important to say my piece on this subject matter. Yeah, it's a mess. But the tweet threads posted by Wonder and Click and what they stated about Sad Milk is the truth. I will be adding those threads below. The whole project was a mess from start to finish. I really wish I didn't need to do this, but with the flurry of DMs I've been getting, I don't have a choice but to speak out. Blair, I'm sorry, but you have hurt me. I need to speak without being told by you. Oh, am I just the villain? I'm always in the wrong? Or something along those lines. Words I have heard from you consistently. I want to be heard for once. I need to clear my mind and conscious after holding on to this for two years. Forgive me, but this is what needs to be done. When looking at the whole of the project, it was mostly controlled and run by Blair. Her main worry was that because of her, in her words, a lack of personality, she felt as though her contribution to Sad Milk needed to be the managerial bureaucracy behind the scenes to justify her presence. This led to a defensive approach when anyone would attempt to assist with the nitty gritty behind the scenes. Despite her claiming that nobody wanted to help her, one of the factors she claims to be the final nail 
nail in the coffin of Sad Milf. Blair was indeed the aggressor. She always has been. An example of this behavior? Look at the Legal Eagle situation. Blair has a habit of starting fights, but will almost never publicly apologize if proven wrong. She will instead hide behind a private apology, probably, and from my perspective, act as though this makes everything better. After all, she would express to me that admitting error would only make her look stupid and weak. I think people forget that it's human nature to make mistakes sometimes. And when people make mistakes, it's fine to talk about that. This sounds tyrannical in my opinion, I'm sorry, this is just insane to me. This will be followed by her blocking people on Twitter, silencing her detractors through YouTube channel bans, deleting comments, and putting her accounts on the download to prevent interaction. For example, on Sad Milk, she would blacklist former collaborators from being mentioned, but manually approve hateful comments towards them. That's f***ed up. Which, in my opinion, were specifically ones which instead praised her or the remaining members, including me. This is her MO. It has been for the four years that I've known her. It actually perfectly ties how we first met and began to be on speaking terms in April of 2019. Sad Milk was very much like this. At the first sign of dissonance, her response was to have me confront OT and Click with this list of talk talking points in an attempt to show them just how wrong they were, which I accepted. This brings me to, well, me. What is missing from both Click and Wonder's threads is the fact that I acted as Blair's frontrunner. Anything Blair needed to say went through me first, essentially act as a spokesman. This was actually a common factor in our relationship. So this person was basically her puppet? I would always act as a filter to keep her out of drama or from saying things which would be seen as offensive or kindle a large larger fire. I stopped doing this in January. This does not excuse me from protecting her for this long, but it's the truth. I could take the approach and say that I was manipulated, which perhaps I was, but I still knew what I was doing was wrong. I always did, and it always hurt. It left a huge black mark on my spirit and my ability to feel comfortable in my own skin. I have moved to Colorado, got a house, and lived with her at the time. She was in my life every day, and I would hear these theories and villainous explanations directed at anyone who wronged her. It was hard to avoid, let alone not fall for them. I believed it was my responsibility to protect my friend from something that, in my view, was clearly hurting her. Something that I felt was eating at her and making her daily life work. Things which, in hindsight, could have been solved with a conversation, but she was unwilling. Instead, the conspiring, backstabbing, and rumor machine were put into full swing. I, much as Wonder and Salty, were forced by Blair to choose between her or Click and OT. Of course I chose the person I lived with, what was I going to do? Move again? I mean, I could have. Once I chose my side, I was met with praise and adoration from her and her mod staff. It, at the time, felt like I was making the right decision. Man, boy was I wrong. I have lost so many friends, isolated myself, been at her side despite feeling like my connections to the world were being severed. I always acted as her talking piece, from yelling at one topic to berating click and other things I did in service of someone who, at the time, I believed every word of. I trusted Blair to hell and back and thought I was doing good. I have learned since then, through both self-reflection and conversations with old friends, just how much I was unintentionally hopeful fully used. There of course is more, much more, more than I could ever hope to cram into this stupid f***ing Twitter thread that I know I'm going to get angry DMs and phone calls over. Blair, I need you to know that you hurt me more than you realize. I know you're scanning this and having your team read over it, maybe even looking at sending me a legal threat as you parade around to do so. But I want you to apologize for once in your life and take accountability. Please, Blair, you would rather paint the world red than admit you have faults. Blair did address Oz Media in her response, and the thing that stuck out to me the most is her very tearful last few minutes discussing their friendship, which we will get into in a moment. But first, here's a few more tweets made by Oz Media shortly after he made his first Twitter thread. There is something truly special about having your inactive dog's account unfollow me first, then blocking me days later, especially after coming to me in messages, yelling at me but not denying anything, then demanding we talk but passive aggressively threatening me when I ask for space and time. Also, hi Blair, having fun monotonously scanning the replies 
eyes of people you block for subtweets? It was a really fun pastime of ours, wasn't it? Stalking the accounts of everyone we pissed off and you blocked? Or they blocked us? Oh, good times. Don't miss them. The way she cried at the end of the video when speaking about you struck me as manipulative. Not trying to minimize emotions here, just struck me as odd. Honestly, I would love to keep things to just sad milk, but those tears, man, I've literally watched her build those exact tears up when we lived together. We'll get into this in a few moments, but a creator that goes by Wonderstruck made a response to Blair, and Oz Media was present for just a short portion of it, but in his portion of the video, he does talk about this a little bit more and discusses how Blair would whip up tears when things were inconvenient for her. It's not really a, like a nice way that I can actually say this. I've like watched her build those tears up on multiple occasions, whether it's she forgot she had a prior engagement, so she built up tears and said, I have to take Casper to vet and I'm very scared, so I won't be able to make it or for talking to other um, like content creators that she's had issues with of building up those tears for like apologies, for talking with employees, for talking with uh, me or her roommates. It's something that I have watched her do on numerous occasions. If they were genuine, I mean, there's that, but I have a really hard time believing it with how many times I've actually seen her build those tears up. Now, nobody can really tell for sure if Blair's crying was genuine except for Blair herself, but especially considering the fact that according to Oz, he had received some pretty nasty DMs after making that first thread, I wouldn't be surprised if this was some kind of manipulation. Again, I can't say that for a fact. I can't say that I'm positive that's what it is. I'm just saying that I wouldn't be shocked if that was the case. Triangle man, triangle man, triangle man hates person man. We then go on to a creator known as Wonderstruck. And this situation really, really makes me sad to hear about because of the involvement of his mental health that she tried to weaponize against him and her making claims about him mistreating his dog. Forgive me for this being scattered, emotions and all. Gotta love him. A sad milk thread. After being threatened with a breach for speaking out, I can confirm that the behavior Blair exhibits is entirely accurate here. I am aware of the bridges I burned and I remain where I am. After sad milk split, it was a constant negative echo chamber that I took part in. Regardless, I used to edit for sad milk. Blair made no effort to take direction. She made everything about herself. Sad milk at the time was the nearest thing the family I had, which sounds pathetic, but the content creator space is a very isolating one. I just want to add in here really quick with my own thoughts on this. I 100% agree. I've thought about making a video talking about this because sometimes this type of field can be so isolating that you can literally end up losing yourself. The amount of hours I would spend online making drafts, editor tutorials for new hires, staying up to get some of the editing in if editors were shorthanded. I missed Christmas with my my brother and father fixing the mistake of the editor she hired and I didn't even get a thank you and it took me more than half a month to even get paid. Meanwhile, she delays payments to editors so she can purchase expensive clothes, visit BMW dealerships, and spend hundreds on food in a day. While I do hold my beliefs towards certain matters, every month or so there is a new villain of the week and they would spend one second being a normal person in our lives and the next second suddenly a hidden monster through, you guessed it, Blair's mouth. To say Sad Milk split on creative differences is a joke. It's a flat out lie. Again, I'm aware of the bridges burned, but I can confirm that call took place where she screamed, cursed, and had a meltdown towards not the click and one topic at a time. It was a train wreck. It was just supposed to be a fun group project and we had become profitable, even to a small extent. Blair wanted creative lead and we went from doing fun creative topics more in line with the Reddit we would all cover on our own channels to doing unenthusiastic view content. Blair took control and wouldn't listen to how the videos should be made. And so we got hyper loud music with childlike sprites paired with adult humor, which just made being a part of Sad Milk humiliating. My friends and I would watch Sad Milk and laugh, not at the content, but at how awful it had become. Not due to anyone not being entertaining, but the lack of quality control. It was an editorial nightmare. It's why in part I stopped editing because my really well-made content got ripped into that by proxy. Blair did not care. It was hers 
and anyone who dared try to take the reins was a threat. After the click, OT, and Salty left, I did almost all of the heavy lifting, which is a thankless job for being small on the internet. I tried making a schedules, I motivated Blair during another mental breakdown of hers to not delete the channel or the Discord since I actively read through the comments on both, and we had people who we mattered to. After months of behind the scenes insults towards the click and OT, it became so stale and negative. Yeah, we all took part, but after it going on so long, it just became day after day. Blair would sit and check click and OT's social blade. She would make fake accounts to stalk them. So now we have two people sharing that Blair had allegedly made fake sock accounts to stalk other creators. It's just really interesting that we have multiple people sharing the same information. Something else that's important to mention here is that when Wonderstruck made his response video, which has actually been recent to recording this, he mentioned how Blair would laugh at people's failing social blades, which in my opinion, if it's somebody who's like done something really, really, really bad, like EDP 445 or Mini Lad or somebody, you know, genuinely hurting people, I think it's fair to point things like that out. But when you're constantly refreshing people's social blades and obsessing over somebody else's social blade and laughing when they're not doing well, that is something I think you should maybe seek therapy for. And I don't mean that as an insult, that's genuinely concerning obsessive behavior. Wonder goes on to say, not just them, but a large portion of the commentary community. I've personally seen her try to get a lawyer to shut down anyone who says anything against her, and they ruined her day by saying, yeah, we really can't do anything. It's insane. Innocent people don't work hard to try and silence others. We would get no work done. I can't count on how many times I pleaded and set up meetings for us to do something and nobody cared. I thought I had a friend who was hurting. Then I saw I had moved to the villain. And like everyone else, I got shut out. Trash talk. And the people I had made efforts to be friends with wouldn't even acknowledge my existence. For me though, I had already moved states under good faith that I was bettering my life. In 30 days of living with Blair, it was a nightmare. I felt like I was trapped in her home, always. She makes everyone her enemy. She called Wonder checking in to see if I'm okay, an invasion of privacy. I sent her numerous messages trying to show that I wanted to be her friend. She lives like an actual monster. Her home is a mess, like hoarders bad. Constant subtweets about me on Twitter and ignoring me. And if I dare say anything back, her Discord manager would happily remind me of my contract. This is disgusting. I also think that it's disgusting that this is a creator whose entire channel is based around exposing corporations, talking about businesses that treat people terribly. And here she is, somebody who runs a business, which is her YouTube channel, and she's treating her employees this bad, allegedly. This is an example of what not to be like when you're running a business and you have employees. This is extremely unprofessional, at least, and possibly something that could be considered workplace harassment, retaliation, and even more at worst. So my therapist, who she accuses me of stealing because she recommended, when I read this, I assume he means that Illuminati accused him of stealing her therapist, that's the way I interpret that, suggested that I leave the house at all costs. And I did. And the details I can't get into further due to legalities. But I ended up with no car, hardly any clothes and money to my name, and no home. Now working full time again, I had no time for my channel. I had cried, bled, and worked through hell to get up. So I watched it die, since my main concern now was just food on my table. All because I made friends with one of the most vile people on the platform. Nobody wanted to talk with me, and I was too afraid to fully go public as I didn't know the reach this massive creator had. I had everything in real life and online taken from me. She personally threw my YouTube play button in the trash. If that isn't symbolic, man, I don't know what is. He goes into more detail about this in his video when he talks about when she took back the BMW, she didn't allow him to get his belongings, and he found out through another creator, which I believe was Oz Media, that she had allegedly thrown out all of his belongings that were in that car, and one of those items was his YouTube play button. Having a YouTube play button for a creator who has worked extraordinarily hard to get the amount of followers that they have is extremely sentimental. It's a very precious item to have. It is something that a lot of people hold dear to their hearts. So to do something like this is awful because, like he said, it's symbolic of basically her saying she has zero respect for him. I do want to say, I don't know if Wonderstruck is aware of this, I doubt he'll even see this video considering so many people are talking about this, but in the very, very slim chance that he sees this and isn't aware, 
which again, he might be. When it comes to a YouTube play button, I do believe you can get a copy of it. You may already have a copy of it. You may already be aware of that. And that goes for anybody else who may have lost their play button in one circumstance or another. I'm pretty sure you can get a duplicate of that. Well, it, I don't know how known that is. If I can find the link to describe that more, I'll leave it in the description below. I have spent the last two years of my life rebuilding from the ground up due to this woman. The only difference is I get to come back stronger as a person. She doesn't. She can't take that away from everyone she has screwed over. Blair, you can't hide anymore. Sooner or later, you are going to push everyone who cared about you away, and you'd realize that the world isn't out to get you. But you made your fears a reality all on your own. I'm not afraid of you. You don't get that from me anymore. Never again. I apologize for how long this thread is. I understand this place probably isn't the best to do it, but I'm so sick of knowing all of this information and never being able to say anything. Have a good day. Be well, everyone. A large portion of Blair's response video was dedicated towards Wonder, and she was saying a lot of things about this person. She implied that he didn't do a lot of work, that he was basically a freeloader. She said that he didn't meet deadlines, even when there was barely any work to give to him. She implied that he completely trashed a BMW that she got for him, and that he didn't make payments on, and in this second part of the thread, and in his response video, he goes over a lot of this information, and essentially proves that there was legal paperwork, he did provide payment for the first month, and he did have the car insured. On top of it, the picture of how trashed his car was was like two soda cans. Meanwhile, there are tons of pictures of the way that her house is in just shambles, which is kind of hilariously ironic to me, but also, Wonder claims that she repossessed this car while he had all of his belongings in it, and she never gave those belongings back to him. He claims that somebody else told him that they were thrown in the trash. One of those items being his YouTube play button. Illuminati also made claims that Wonderstruck was not a good pet owner and talked about how his dog made a mess on their floor after getting out one night and the entire situation just seemed like a really unfortunate circumstance that could have happened to anybody. But it seems like from everything that Wonder has described, he did pretty much anything that any good dog parent could possibly do, including sleeping outside to try and find his dog faster. My brief response to Blair. As many of you are aware, Blair has come public with her side of the story. The sad milk members and I expected either this or her burying it. I am aware how opinions are formed, so I will explain briefly since I am working on a video response. I work full time, so it may take a moment to complete. Blair has come forward with a lot of information I did not initially come forward with. This was an active decision on my part. A lot of this information is part of a pending small claims lawsuit. My county is entirely backed up and in the state of Texas I have two years to file which has given Blair ample time to do the right thing. I will get into that but first let's rewind as I want to address a handful of things. I'd like to start with the blatant lie on my role as a sad milk editor. I did not become an editor to cover my share of the joined editor payments. I was living paycheck to paycheck yet always paid my share. I became an editor for sad milk after they loved a demo I submitted. I was so new to contract work that I personally thought $20 was fair pay for my work, which obviously I was compensated more than that. In my span of Sad Milk, I edited roughly three to four videos. Sad Milk was a channel that lasted almost over a year. I was not an active editor, so to say I paid editors via my own edits is inaccurate. About three months in, Sad Milk became profitable and we stopped doing shared payments because the money from the channel went to the editors rather than coming out of the Sad Milk members' pockets. We had our Sad Milk fund, and then we had editors who got paid not via Sad Milk payroll. When I did edits, I was an editor. I made the claim that I had a delayed payment from her. This was due to her former channel manager telling me two years later that Blair had been spending on food, cars, etc., while lying to employees about why money is being moved around and payments are delayed. He knows who he is, that is for him to tell if he chooses to do so. I am not speaking on the click allegations because that is his story to tell, which he and tends to do. This was written before the click made his video. Regarding the Christmas vlog, I helped last second 
end with an expensive video we all put work into because the person Blair contracted did not do a job that I believe met the standards of our channel. A person Blair later herself fired. I took on the role as editor the last second to help out a channel I thought we all cared about while editing content of my own. For context on this video, we all flew to Colorado to film an IRL video. Blair spent a large amount of money so we could build gingerbread houses. It was fun. It was expensive. She hired an editor and never checked in on his updates. It was a Christmas Eve video, so when the video was barely on time, I was stressed that it was not of the quality for a video we all worked really hard to make happen. Sad Milk represented my name, Blair's name, and Oz's name. Blair wanted to help with the channel. Blair made it clear she felt that she did not receive help. So, from where I am sitting, it comes across as contradictory when she attacks my way of helping. I do not believe Blair would have been okay with a scuffed, audio-popping, bleak video going live on the channel because she had never checked in on the editor she hired. If I am wrong, then I apologize. You stated that the video went live on Christmas Eve, so it does not make sense that I would miss Christmas Day with my brother and father. Let me explain. I had stayed up the entire night prior working on my own content, then pulled a second all-nighter to fix our Christmas Eve video. My sleep schedule was screwed for that video, so come Christmas, I was too exhausted to see my family due to overlook and the last-minute fixes. Editorial exhaustion. Blair goes on to inaccurately describe my living situation. She also openly spoke of the city where I live. While I have been open about it before in the past, I do not believe she would be pleased with me revealing in a video that she lives in other points I will further expand on later are as follows. I never complained about my car breaking down. It was not old. It was a 2011 sedan. I never said my car would break down if I made the trip. I did not want to take a small sedan back and forth when I could clear 4000 from selling it. My brother instead got the car for free after his died. My complaint with the car was that I had a massive dent from someone who had rear-ended me. I did not have multiple roommates. I had one, singular. My friends are not terrible people. They are my family. I was frustrated by a lack of dishes being done and being locked out of my home twice by my roommate. He did we were growing apart. I loved them, but they don't do content. I don't hold that against them. I just wanted to meet a circle who did what I did. I never once asked for Blair's help in terms of cars or living situations. In fact, I declined offers due to not wanting to be a freeloader of any kind. Blair says I did not pay rent, yet she leaves out the fact that I was only supposed to stay until August when I took the job in February. This was because Blair was building a home to get into real estate. I was supposed to move into this home and pay her every month. She was going to be my landlord. When I ended my lease, I was notified last second that December would be the new date. I stated I was uneasy here. The, the editing job was not easy due to her erratic schedule. She only had one video for me to do as she had another editor working on another video. I was given an extension because my computer software bricked itself. I flew to Colorado to pick up another computer I came back and worked for 20 hours to get the video done. I was locked out of editor files and then fired for not meeting deadlines. I was not kept on payroll any longer. I asked before Blair had work how I could pull my weight. Blair's podcast, her soap shop, I did and asked every day what I could do. Blair did not stream and she had no schedule for anything an editor would need from a professional boss. She did not want short clips. She wanted 20 to 40 minute VODs and this was not a challenge for me. The deadlines fell on computers, not my abilities as an editor. All the while, Blair was subtweeting me online as my boss. Again, I want to reiterate my opinions on this. I think this is extremely unprofessional and just so many levels of inappropriate for you to be doing that to your employees if this is true. The claim that I was speaking inappropriately on forms is false. I have never been made aware of this, and if it were true, why did Blair not reach out to me as my boss? This is a baseless claim with no weight. I believe this is what he goes into more detail in on his video where he talks about the reason why he was actually fired, which is ridiculous. As for the inappropriate comment I made on a forum, I have never heard of this. Blair claims to have a strict policy on discipline, yet why didn't she or her staff ever reach out to me about this problem? Why does she not provide evidence on this comment and what forum? So I reached out to Oz and I found the answer and the comment I made was supposed to be grounds for termination. I'd like to reiterate that means means a total loss of income to a person. This was the, along the lines of the comment that I made. If I could be an animal for a day, I would be a furry, and my favorite food would be ass. You can't make this up, man. Oh.
fuck? I can't believe you've done this. Why did I go off on Blair? Because I was being harassed by my employer who had a hand on every aspect of my life. My car, my money, my home. But there is not a dollar value amount you can pay me to be a verbal punching bag. The reason I went home was to visit my dad because I felt trapped under Blair's roof. As for the car, the contract was not legally binding. I had an ex-police officer, a former contract maker, and a lawyer look over it. It is a fluff contract. I did have have insurance. The car never resided in Austin, Texas. I was not living there. My address had been changed to Colorado Springs. I had discussed with Oz due to Blair and I not being on speaking terms about returning the car. Blair asked that I pay the depreciation value and I agreed, meaning I would pay even without having the car. When I asked to see what I was legally bound to, I never received an answer. Blair then, in the dead of night, came to my father's home and revoked the car along with all of my possessions inside of it. The car was a mess due to me living in it. The windshield was cracked when a semi-truck kicked up a rock into it. He describes this more in his video. I went by the BMW dealership and they said I could bring it back later that week and they could fix it no problem. I was there due to blowing a flat. Blair has this record. I would not have returned the car in that state and I never intended to. Blair revoked the car because she knew I was not legally bound to it. I had no way to retrieve my belongings that were taken in the car and in Colorado. I had no money to my name due to moving insurance and monthly car payments, followed by deposits and application fees for apartments. I spent multiple legal demand letters for my belongings after Blair said she would make arrangements to return them, which she never followed through on. My father contacted on my behalf for months. Her lawyer said she would go after my dad and I for harassment. Legalities are not threats. I was and continue to be within my rights. As per the contract, it was not legally binding. However, if it were, I had paid for a full month of the car and it was repossessed before that time. So if it were legally binding, Blair would owe me that remaining amount for that month. I will touch on more serious topics such as my mental health, my dog, and further information regarding what I've briefly mentioned here when I compile a video. I work full time and as you can imagine, I'm very drained from this situation. Before I go, I'd like to touch on one more thing. I'm aware doubt is cast on my claims and that Blair has receipts, but I'd like to point out a very blatant lie. It was stated in the video that I went into a room that was off limits and used for unboxing and that my intention was to humiliate Blair and Oz. I'd like to point out that Blair scrutinized the image, which is why I don't understand understand that she could not see that the bed in the photo was purchased after I had already left. I could not have taken the photo, nor did I go into that room. I did not want to share every image due to it not being my home, rather my friends. Blair, I did not take those photos. Oz Media took them. This was the state of your home two years after I left. To watch you manipulate my friend throughout this video while you trashed his home and made him live in fear horrifies me. Oz reached out to me a few months ago, telling me he finally saw you for who you were. He apologized to me profusely, and I had my doubts at first, but we are working on our friendship and Oz will always hold a special place in my heart. No matter what, he is my friend and you blatantly lied about a photo he took. Also to say I don't care about my dog when Blair let Casper live in those conditions is beyond hypocritical. I will touch base on this more in my video, but I love both Casper and James. While Blair was gone, I would sit in my room with both of them and watch videos of Hawks until we all napped. This post has gone on long enough, please allow me time to properly voice my thoughts and be mentally sound enough to create a video to fully comb through everything and share the receipts needed. In the meantime, please feel free to review my screenshots. They have a brief breakdown of what they are. Until my video, I will remain offline. Please be well, take care of yourselves. After all of this, I am still not afraid of you, Blair. I know who I am, my friends, my family, my boyfriend, and audience know who I am. You cannot take that from me. And then he provides multiple links to screenshots of things such as proof of insurance, legal emails, and documents, conversations between himself and other people in the Sad Milk group, mostly venting about the condition of Blair's house, and much, much more. I know I've been reading out every single thread so far, but in the description below, I'll have Wonder's full video where he shows these images and dives into them a little bit deeper. But to me, a lot of what he provides seems to contradict a lot of things that Blair has said, 
and the evidence seems to be really compelling. There's one more thread regarding this situation written by Wonder's boyfriend, and then we'll get into the mental health aspect of this situation because that part infuriates me with how Blair has allegedly treated this person. Actually, I don't even think I have to say allegedly for that because you can see in the video. This is going to be regarding Illuminati and Wonder. I am Wonder's boyfriend. I'm not a creator, nor do I have anything to gain from this. No one is telling me to speak out or any of that. I'm literally just some guy who sees misinformation about someone dear to me. This is purely me speaking on him and his dog. I honestly don't even know if he wants me to say anything, as I'm certain he doesn't want me pulled into any drama, because I am so far removed from the creator space that this is like another world to me. I want to touch on Blair's claims about Wonder's treatment of James and James's temperament and behavior as someone who has lived with them for nearly half a year now. First, I have never once seen anything to indicate any sign of past or current abuse. This is something I take extremely serious as an owner of a dog who has been through traumatic events. A dog which Wonder suggested we slow introduce to James so he can re-socialize and learn to play a bit despite being 14 and having an anxiety disorder. James is by far the calmest dog I have ever met. In my time living with him, he has barked exactly one time because something in the backyard spooked him at night. No matter how many dogs we pass on walk, people he meets, food out, cats, bugs, literally anything, James at most gets excited and hops around. Wonder adopted him because he was the dog they used to introduce other dogs to the shelter. That's so freaking cute, I'm not gonna lie. I'm trying not to be too biased in this situation, but that's really cute. James has never had an accident in the house in my time here. Wonder does buy James toys. He doesn't play with them much, but we've had our fair share of tug of war or trying to teach him fetch. Even recently, we got him a snuffle mat so he could slow down while eating while using his brain to find food and play. Every single day without fail, I listen to Wonder walk around the house, store, work, etc., singing songs about James. Every time we go out, he will talk about saving up money to buy vitamins for James. Every time we come home, James is immediately at the door ready to see Wonder. He sits next to him while he cooks, waits at his desk, while he edits. He's behind me right now laying on a six foot massive throne of a bed that Wonder has dubbed as exclusively James's and even then Wonder is planning on getting him another memory foam bed so that his joints are supported. He sleeps in bed with us on the pillows not even at the foot every single night. Chester does the same thing oh my god. Wonder has personally skipped meals so that he could afford food for James no matter what. He doesn't even cheap out on dog food when he could. He makes a conscious effort no matter what to provide James with, with the health diet and home. I've literally sat with Wonder fully clothed, soaking wet in a bathtub for nearly two hours to slowly introduce James to the bath due to his bath anxiety. He loves that dog, so to hear anyone even slightly insinuate that he does not take care of James or care about dogs in general is incredibly inaccurate. I will let Wonder speak on his own experiences in the past. That is not my place. He will come out with everything he needs to disprove Blair's claims, but I truly wanted to share from my perspective what kind of dog owner Wonder is. He is not some irresponsible asshole who lets his dog sh** all over the house and attack other dogs. James is his and my family. Thank you. Like, come on, look at these boys. That do be looking like a good boy though, not gonna lie. I'm going to be really brief when it comes to the mental health aspect of this situation because I think the only person who can really dive deep into this is Wonderstruck himself as he is directly affected by this and his words are the most important to hear on it since this involves his mental health. From what I believe was a way to attempt to discredit Wonder, Illuminati shared really personal details about Wonder's mental health, including him wanting to end his life. I'm not going to show much of the clips from him in this state because he was very upset and clearly didn't want his face to be shown. Being upset as he was, he blurted out himself at certain points, so I really don't want to add too much in there. I do want to show you this clip though really quick because I think this is a really important conversation to be had and it really, really disturbs me and I'll explain more in a moment. So when Blair claimed she sent authorities to my house for a wellness check. She didn't care about me. Also, something I'd like to note is that I wasn't there when Blair called 911 to send authorities to my home, but depending on her wording, it could have gone very wrong. To tell authorities there is a mentally unwell man with a weapon, that can go so very bad, so very fast. What he says here is actually 100% true. This could have ended up in a fatal situation. And what gets me the most is I could be wrong here, but it 
it seems like she did this not with intent of trying to help or to care, but with malicious intent. Again, I could be wrong about that, I'm just basing my opinion off of what has been described here. Regardless, this situation makes me sick. I actually know of a situation that happened in my local area where something like this occurred. Somebody was trying to end their lives, the cops were called, and it ended badly. Instead of receiving help, that person's life was ended by a police officer. These things absolutely do happen, and it's not a joke. A lot of people have come to me with the requests of this video because people have been calling this creep show art 2.0 due to how many insane things have taken place and how long this has been going on and how many people were affected and the way that she has had vendettas against people and smear campaigns against people. I will say I think there are a lot of similarities that she has shown through her actions that remind me of creep show art. Some things she has done are almost identical to things that creep show art has done such as making stock accounts and stalking people from what i remember creep show art didn't make stock accounts on twitter that i know of uh but i know that she did that whole local thing and was talking to herself and arguing with herself we see blair doing the same thing on reddit with these doobie schmertz accounts do i think that she is creep show art 2.0 i think there's a lot of similarities but i don't think she is creep show art i think she is illuminati and i think creep show art is creep show art and i think they are both heavily flawed people that have done very seriously harmful things to others in some ways are equally as bad and in other ways are their own separate thing she has had such an impact on this community as a whole where even people who haven't associated with her at this point if someone disagrees with her it's oh it's a new creep show art and, and it just seems like there's this obsession i will still once in a while get comments of people comparing me to creep show art because i've made a mistake in a video or I talked about somebody that that person was a fan of. I've even gotten people claiming that I am creep show art. I I'm taken aback when I hear those comments because I don't know how many people realize creep show art's face has been posted online. She has filmed herself talking. She has put her own pictures in her videos and we look nothing alike. And I don't even think we sound alike. But at the end of the day, this is something that I've mentioned before where it seems like this person has left an impact and now any person she's interacted with or as publicly mentioned to this day because it's not just me it's other creators too to this day they still receive comments about how awful they were for associating with creep show art even though i don't know of one person who has stood by creep show art's side after finding out about what she had done. When it comes to this situation, I just wanna let you know, I definitely see a lot of similarities and I find it justified to say some of this reminds me of what Creep Show Art has done. Also, I think most people who are saying Creep Show Art 2.0 are saying it as a joke, like earlier how I mentioned that Amy thing. That was obviously a joke, but there are some people who take this really, really serious, and that's kind of what I'm talking about. Not jokes being made over the similarities or anything like that. And thank you so much if you made it all the way to the end of this video. I want to let you know, before you go, if you've made it all the way to the end of this video, I want you to pay attention really, really closely here. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I have been going through a lot. I've been talking about this for the past few videos, by the way. It's not a surprise. Um, I have some really, really, really good things going on in my life, and simultaneously some really, really not good things going on. I have a few family members. It started out with one. I have a couple family members right now who are not doing well, okay? Um, so at any point, it could be tomorrow. It could be a month from now. It could be a year from now because one of my family members is actually getting better. They're kind of like this. So, you know, um, if I'm absent for a little while, and you're not seeing any community tab posts from me or any other social media posts from me and you're not seeing me post online, it is possible that that could be the reason. I don't want anybody to worry in case, you know, it could be related to something else, but I'm just kind of preparing myself for, because I, I'll just, I'll just be blunt about it. I, I have somebody in my family on hospice care and then I have somebody else in my family who had just recently gotten sick. And the person who is on hospice care is very, very, very important to me. And it's been rough. Right now they're doing better than they were, um, but they're still not out of the woods. And 
you know, it's it's a unfortunate situation where they're older and the only thing I could do is just be there as much as I can. And that's actually one of the reasons why I have taken so long to post content this month. Um, on top of the fact that this video is just so extraordinarily long. It's it's been a lot and I just really appreciate your patience with everything because I've mentioned this before and a lot of you have been really, really supportive. And I think, you know, it's really kind of you to be understanding of that and i just want to let you know what's going on uh briefly i don't really like to go into too many details when it involves people in my personal life because they're not public figures uh but i don't want to completely leave you in the dark and be vague and let you uh speculate either so that's just my brief mention of it um thank you so much if you made it all the way to the end of this video thank you so much to everybody who has given me a super chat thank you so much again for adam and eve for sponsoring this video and thank you so much to everybody supporting me on patreon as well with that being said i will see you in the next video um i don't even know at this point what i'm going to talk about i have like three or four different options but yeah i'll leave it at that i'll see you later bye